it going? Welcome back. It's Joey Sultan here with another video and recipe brought to you. Might as well introduce you to myself. My name is Joey Sultana and I am a chef. I've been a chef for about five years now. Started when I was 16 years old. I am aged 21 and I am from Sydney, Australia and born and raised here. So I'm a professional chef outside this house as well. I do home cooking videos and tutorials at my home. But other than that, I do have a job as well and I am a chef. So I've worked in many restaurants over the past couple years. I've worked at the Key Restaurant in Sydney, Australia. I've worked at S in Sydney, Australia. So really, I have my culinary experience from working in high quality restaurants back in my apprentice days. So I have evolved through professional chefs like Peter Gilmore, Chef Peter Doyle. The time and the pressure sometimes when you're at that age and you want to learn and be really strong at what you do. So I'd just like to thank Chef's Roll community for collaborating with me and hopefully I can share you guys my food experiences and my crafts in my past experience of working as a chef. So today I'm going to show you guys a recipe of mine that I love. It's a really delicious Biscoff Chiro dessert recipe and it's really special to me, especially in my family as well. We all endure this sweet dessert. I am partnering up with Chef's Roll community for this special quarantine edition for all you guys at home that have nothing to do or want to learn how to cook, some simple tricks on the way. I will show you guys simple and easy delicious recipes. So have a go at this, it's super delicious and I hope you really enjoy it. So if you haven't seen Biscoff before, it's a really nice biscuit spread. Almost has like Anzac kind of biscuits, it's really tasty. Bit of sugar, bit of spices and it's a really nice spread on toast. But today, I'm going to utilize it and make it in a really nice churro dessert. Basic ingredients that you guys should have as staples at home. Let's dive straight into this video and enjoy our Biscoff churros. Alright, so let me just explain to you guys the ingredients that we'll be using today. All we really need is a few basic ingredients, but especially Biscoff, make sure you got Biscoff spread. I have the smooth one, you can have the crunchy style, that is just as good. Alright, so come a bit closer, I'll show you guys what we need today. Alright, so first things first, we need for our churro dough, some vanilla bean paste. So I've got two teaspoons worth of vanilla bean paste, 25 grams of caster sugar. I'm going to be using four eggs, so two egg yolks and two whole eggs. Then we'll be also using some regular plain flour. So I've got 142 grams of plain flour here. Follow that with some butter, unsalted butter here. I've got 84 grams, 235 grams of water, teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of nutmeg, and a teaspoon of cinnamon powder. All right, that is your basic churro dough that you need. Very simple ingredients that you guys should have at home. Now we'll just start off by our Biscoff caramel. So what you need is half a cup of your Biscoff spread, three quarter cup of thickened cream, you need one cup of caster sugar, two teaspoons of vanilla bean paste, quarter cup of water, and four tablespoons of unsalted butter. That is it guys, that is the basic ingredients you need for your Biscoff caramel. All right, so let's start off by making our Biscoff caramel first. So first things first, you're gonna bring a pot to a stove, add in your cream to your pot, and we just wanna heat this through we don't want to bring it up to a boil, we just want to heat it up until it's just warm enough. And then we just set aside and follow through our sugar and our water to cook the rest for our caramel. So bring another pot to your stove and we want to add in our sugar. Follow through by adding your water. So at this stage now, you want to bring your sugar to a boil with your water and you want to grab a brush with a bit of water and you want to lightly brush the edges of your pan just as to prevent crystallization and also burning from the sugar. So brush it lightly only if you see any crystallization on the side. This is just to help the caramel cook perfectly. And also you don't want to whisk or mix your caramel, only give it a light swirl like I am here. So you want to always keep an eye on the sugar crystals so that it doesn't develop on the side because it could really potentially burn your sugar. If you leave it there too long, it will catch and it can burn and ruin the caramel. So this will take a few more minutes and you want it to start to come into a nice amber gold color. And then we'll finish it off with the butter, the heated cream, and then our Biscoff and vanilla bean paste. Alrighty guys, we're in business now. As you can tell, it is starting to get a nice golden color. We're not there yet, just a few more minutes and we'll be ready to go. 
Now with caramel, you gotta remember that with the residual heat that you keep cooking, it's gonna potentially burn. If you leave it too long on the stove while it's on, you gotta be really mindful and have your eyes on it all the time. And it's starting to get really golden now like this. I turn it off and at this stage, we're gonna add in our warm cream that we heated up beforehand, beautiful. Also, as you can see, the caramel has actually darkened very slightly. So remember when I said, turn it off at that perfect time because you don't want to overcook and burn your caramel. Beautiful. Now we'll add in our cream a little bit at a time. You don't want to add it all at once because it could potentially bubble up and overflow your pan. Also note that with caramel, you don't want to have your heat on high. I usually turn it off and let the residual heat cook it off. Awesome, now we're gonna add in our butter that we've got here. Give that a nice mix. I've added it cold, so it really emulsifies and thickens your caramel, making it extra rich and indulgent. All right, so we're gonna add in a teaspoon of your vanilla bean paste. Give that a good stir. And you get that really strong whiff to come out straight away from the vanilla bean as soon as it touches the heat. Great smell and great flavor. Alrighty, at this stage, we're up to the Biscoff spread mix. So you want to add in half a cup of your Biscoff to your caramel. So I leave this at the ends and this really is my favorite part. It really thickens it up your caramel and really makes it nice and sticky and sweet and rich. I absolutely love this caramel, one of my favorites. And that is it guys, just add it in, melt it through, give it a good mix. Set it aside and now we'll start off by pouring it into a glass bowl. We're gonna let this set on the side to cool down a bit because remember this is caramel and it is very hot at the moment so we've got to cool this down and we'll start off next with our churro dough all right if you're keen like i am to taste this just be careful this is caramel it is super hot so i suggest you don't touch it at the moment let it cool down first and then give it a good taste all right so our biscoff caramel is ready now we're going to move on to our churro dough so like i said before basic ingredients what you'll need is pretty simple if you haven't made churros before very simple recipe and simple dough to make. All right, so let's dive straight into it, yeah? So you need one size medium pot like this. Place it into our stove. All right, so you wanna add in 84 grams of your unsalted butter to your pot. Heat your butter on a medium to high heat, and then you wanna follow through by adding your vanilla bean paste, then your water, add in your sugar, your salt and also your spices here. So we've got some cinnamon and some ground nutmeg. Now it's entirely up to you guys if you want to add the cinnamon and the nutmeg to your churro mix. It's really up to you, just the personal preference that I love. So it just gives that a really nice spicy note to it. All right, now you just want to give this a nice mix. You don't want to use a whisk for this dough because when you whisk with the flour getting added into it, it's got to really clog up and really make it hard for you to mix. So I just like to use a spatula. So in saying that, you want to add in your flour now. The stove is still on a medium to high heat. You do want to cook this off for about two to three minutes, your flour, to get a really nice toasted flavor and to get that bitterness out from the flour. So we're just going to cook this out for about three minutes and constantly mixing to form a nice dough like so. And the heat now, I'm just going to reduce it to a low now and finish cooking it off for another minute. So we cook it for three minutes on a medium to high heat and then we cook it for another minute on low heat. Beautiful. That's what you want. You want the dough to come together as one and make sure it looks like this. You don't want it to be clumpy still with flour and you want it nice and smooth like that. Awesome. So let that sit aside and now we'll move on with our eggs. So we need two whole eggs for this and two egg yolks. The reason why I use two egg yolks rather than two more whole eggs is because I love the richness and the fattiness that egg yolk gives to the inside of the churros really makes it nice, dense and fluffy interior when we eat our churros, which is what we want. We want that inside to be nice and fluffy and the outside to be nice and crisp. So we just separate our egg yolks now. Reserve the egg whites for later for another recipe we don't eat it today. Beautiful. All right, so we let our dough rest for about five minutes and cool down because we don't want to add the eggs straight away to the pot because with the heat, it could potentially scramble and destroy your whole dough. So you gotta be mindful that you cool down your dough first. It should look like this, resemble a nice smooth dough. 
and at this stage now we can add in our eggs because the dough is not too hot like I said before you want to cool it down and you want to add in one egg at a time constantly mixing like this now a lot of people freak out at this point because they see the dough and it looks like an absolute mess and they think they've done it wrong don't worry it's normal that's how it should be you may be thinking to yourself did I add the eggs at the wrong time but don't worry that's how it should be don't freak out so you want to add in one egg at a time and give it a nice mix until it forms together into a nice dough again it should start to come out very sticky and gooey like this now you can add the eggs all at once if you like but I just like to do the simple process add the egg one at a time for better results so you can also do this in a steam mixer just put everything in a bowl and let the mixer do its thing all right so you want your dough to be really elastic -y, also smooth so it should come together eventually just like that you want it to also be sticky enough so this is what will create a nice crunch outside the churro put this through a piping bag and then we'll start to pipe into our fryer all right guys so now to add in your dough to your piping bag i like to do a simple method where i put it into a glass like this this is a lot easier to transfer it i like to just wrap it like this and then put it through the glass and then just fold it like that so it's a lot easier for you to transfer on your own i like to use the glass as a stabilizer so then also i've got a six mil star tip so make sure you've got one of these because the churros won't look like churros if it's not a star tip so make sure you got one of these proper ones i'm using a six mil today so this should be a good size all right so this is what it looks like a six mil star tip if you don't have one of these guys check them online they're very cheap to get really not expensive now these churros won't work if you do not have a star tip i'm telling you if you just have a round nozzle or some other type it's really not going to look good and just look like poop so make sure you have one of those star tips just to make it look like professional churro the way it should be now you want to add in your churro mix to your piping bag that i've just put my nozzle in also so remember that make sure you got your nozzle in first and we'll set that aside and we'll add in our sugar mix so we're going to be using some cinnamon and some custard sugar for this mix pretty straightforward all i've got here is one cup of custard sugar and half a cup of cinnamon powder pretty straightforward just give it a good mix together and we'll lay it on a tray ready for our churros all right guys so we've got our oil up to temperature i've got it at 170 to 175 degrees celsius we've got a popping bag set as well with the nozzle we've got a tray here with some paper towel and i've got a slotted spoon like this to ladle the churros out and also i've got the tray that we made before our cinnamon sugar mix all right so make sure you've got your station ready your missing plus because once you deep fry them, they don't take too long to cook and you've got to have your section ready. So make sure you drain them in some paper towel to drain the excess oil. Alright, so let's start piping these amazing churros and we'll start cooking them off. So I like to pipe two to three churros at a time because remember when we add cold to a hot fryer, it will decrease the temperature quickly. So you be very careful when you're adding things to hot oil that you control your temperature also with maintaining it. So don't put too much at once because you could potentially put your temperature really low and your churros won't cook properly. So I just love to cook them at 170 to keep your churros nice, golden and crisp. Staying at home, have nothing to do. This is probably one of my favorite churro desserts to make with your family. It's such an easy and delicious recipe to make. Simple and super decadent to eat. I really do enjoy this one, guys. Have a go, have a crack. So all we're gonna do is pipe two to three churros at a time you don't want to overcrowd your pot like i said before it could decrease your temperature and really ruin your texture of your churros so that's very important also make sure you note that so as you can tell on my digital thermometer i've had it there for about a minute and it's weighing about 165 to 170 so that's from adding in your churros so you can obviously tell the temperature has decreased so you want to fry about two minutes on both sides until nice and golden brown Drain on some kitchen paper towel. Just hear the sound of this light, crispy texture churro. So as you can notice, those little ear pockets outside of that churro, that beautiful crispiness that's got to get really nice texture to our churro. Absolutely stunning. 
So now we're gonna coat it in our cinnamon sugar that we prepared earlier. Coat it really nice and lightly with our cinnamon sugar. Beautiful. So you wanna let them sit on a kitchen paper for about a minute just to drain that excess oil. And then you wanna dust it with the sugar while it's still warm and also when there's a little bit of oil still attached to it. If you do it when it's completely dried out, then yes, it won't stick to your churro. So it's important that you cut your churros after a minute or so. Okay, so it's entirely up to you also what size you want your churros to be like. I just like mine very big and they just look a lot better. And also when you do this, you want to pipe all the way down to the bottom and use your scissor to snip off your churro. You can also use a sharp knife for this. So pipe down all the way till it reaches the bottom, depends on your size, and then we'll just cut them off with the scissors or a sharp knife. Easy peasy, just like that. Let it do its thing, so two minutes on each side, and enjoy this moment. So FYI, if you're interested where these churros came from and originated, well, most of you will probably know by now. So Spain and Portugal in Europe, they are super popular in Europe and also South America. Mexico plays a big part of it. Cuba also. Mexico with their delicious chocolate Mexican sauce. That is a top one for you. And Cuba also, they use a really nice guava fruit that they do also with the churros. Really nice. So there's very, so much you can do with churros so versatile to use and today I'll be using Biscoff so we're going back here in Belgium some European time I love Biscoff especially in churros so I hope you guys enjoyed this one Alrighty, beautiful. Our churros are nicely coated now. We bring out our Biscoff caramel. So if you let it sit out for a bit, it will start to get really thick. So I've just microwaved it for about 15 to 30 seconds on high speed and it will come out just like this, beautiful and runny. So now what we're gonna do is grab a tip, a small tip like this, and we're gonna have this in our piping bag and we're gonna insert our caramel into our churros. Yes, we're gonna stuff our churros and this is gonna be absolutely amazing. So what you need is a straw like I have here, and we're gonna insert it through our churros and create that nice hole that goes all the way through. So what we do first is make sure you have the tip inside your bag first, and we'll add in our delicious gooey Biscoff caramel to our bag, and that's the consistency you want, guys. Nice and runny. So we're gonna insert it to our delicious crisp churros. So first things first, grab your straw and we're gonna insert this through the hole and then we wanna go halfway through our churro. You don't wanna go all the way through because you might miss and cut against the other side. So I just like to keep it consistent and insert your straw until you reach halfway through your churro. Just a lot easier to work like this and a lot more sufficient. And that's pretty straightforward. Do the rest of all your delicious crispy churros and then we'll pipe in our delicious Biscoff caramel to finish off. All right, if you notice, my finger is in the middle of the churro, so you can actually feel the straw when it reaches that center, so it's pretty easy. All right, this is my favorite part of building up this churro. You want to stuff your churros with your delicious oozy caramel, so you want to fill it up until it's completely full of that delicious caramel. Do the rest of them and enjoy this special moment. So if you haven't heard of Biscoff cookies or Biscoff spread, it's basically a sweet shortbread cookie that is blitzed up into a paste. It's mixed with some spices and it has a really deep, rich caramel flavor.
drizzle more of that bisque of caramel because why not make it look sexy this is going to be absolutely amazing enjoy these delicious biscoff caramel churros make it snow with that icing sugar make it look extra sweet and delicious Enjoy the sweet, chewy Biscoff Caramel Churros, guys. Just amazing. Enjoy with a cup of coffee and you are set. Thanks guys for watching on my Biscoff Churros today. Hope you've enjoyed this video and recipe. Please let me know in the comments below what you'd like to see for more future videos and requests. Appreciate you guys, all the support that you give me and it really means a lot to me. I'd like to say thanks to Chef's Roll again for our collaboration on this quarantine edition on my first dish that I've come up with. It is the Biscoff Churros. Really simple dessert and delicious to make. If you haven't heard of Chef's Roll, the community, check them out on their website at chefsroll.com or even on their socials on Facebook and Instagram. That's where I'm connected from. So just check them out on Chef's Roll. Really great content, full of food and amazing chefs there. And you'll find some great information about what they do. I'll put the link down below where to find them. Thanks again for watching and I hope you've enjoyed this video and recipe. Let me know in the comments below. Give me a tag and I hope to see you guys very soon with another recipe and video. Ciao for now, all the best.